If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this hot and sweaty episode. Oh, coming in hot. Of Mind Pump. Adam, Justin, and myself do our typical 26-minute intro in this episode. We start off with Adam's music goals. Typical, For huh? 2018. Yeah. <laughs> what are you, you going to start a band or something? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. You'll we also, see. We also you got to listen to find out. We also talk about Adam's pickup basketball game and his lack of cardio. <laughs> Not heart. He's got oh, plenty of heart. Surprising. It's the cardio. Yeah. Then we talked about sardines, one of my favorite foods. Me and Doug actually went out in the hallway and snuck a can of Thank Thrive Market. God. We would not let you in here. Thrive Market sardines. You can actually get a 4.4 ounce can of sardines in olive oil for like $2.19 or something like that. A very, very good price. Thrive Market, one of our sponsors. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, here's what you're going to get. You're going to get one month free membership. You get $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more, and you'll get free shipping. We also mention our other sponsor, Organifi. We talk about their cocoa or cacao, excuse me, bliss, which none of us have tried. Yeah. We haven't yeah, tried cacao bliss yet. Yeah, we would, would like to. would love for you guys to send we us would definitely like to try some that. cacao bliss to eat. Um, but there's some recipes on the Organifi uh, website that Adam's referred to a couple times. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, go to the blog session, you'll see all those recipes. And if you buy something, enter the code MINDPUMP and get a discount. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, do we believe that sports and physical activities build character and do they also build characters? Yes and yes. Yes. Next question was, is it possible to be an athlete and also be truly healthy? A little controversy here. Mm-hmm. Next question was, what is our take on stevia? Stevia is a calorie-free or low-calorie sweetener that a lot of manufacturers are using to replace the artificial sweeteners, aspartame, and sucralose. I'm on that green Coke, yo. Do we think it's a yeah. good alternative? What do we think of that particular ingredient? And finally... Can your body get adapted to a certain number of steps every single day and then start to burn less calories when you do those steps? Find out in this episode. Also, you are heading into the year 2018. How about getting that year started the right way? How about you? we get a program where you've got the whole year planned out for you, where you can follow one MAPS program after another. Now, normally, if you would enroll in a year's worth of programming with us, it would be like, I don't know, Six hundred million dollars, like five thousand. Million. It's worth Whoa, a, million a million dollars for Holy sure. Shit. Uh, but it would be a lot. But we have something called the Super Bundle, which includes Maps Anabolic, Maps Aesthetic, Maps Performance, Maps Anywhere, Maps Prime, and Mods. Uh, it's a year's it's worth of exercise. Superman does for his training, and it's super. It's discounted because it is a bundle. Also, if you enroll in any of our programs, you'll get an offer for half off into our forum, and then you're in the forum for life. By the way, next year and then forever afterwards, if you ever get form access, you're going to have to pay an annual fee every single year. So now is the time to enroll, and the place to do it is mindpumpmedia.com. Doug, tell me what time it is. It It's T-shirt time. What time is it? It's T-shirt time, boys and girls. It's that T-shirt time. It's that T-shirt time. Let's all do this. Who wants a shirt? You get a shirt. Throw them out. You get a shirt. Everybody. That's- Actually, a lot of people do get a shirt. Oh, how, yeah? many, how, how many, many reviews? reviews? Uh, we had 26 reviews. Whoa, people like us. Wow. That's not bad. Not bad We just got to bribe them. Mm. <laughs> all right, exactly. It's the Christmas season. Everybody's giving. All right, so we're giving out seven shirts. Damn. Seven it up. shirts. First up is Brandon George, Alexa A. Bowen, Danny Fink, Crot- CrossFit Court. CrotchFit. <laughs> I like that better. Loiter 2020. Darby Lynn and M. Kush 10. All of you are winners. That's a pot smoker. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Thanks, y'all. Good job. Justin, do that. Do the mind pump uh, like uh, trap song or Skrillex type song, you know? Oh, like yeah. Like mind pump. Mind pump. When that beat drop. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Yeah, that's there it good. is. That was so good. We're coming in hot. <laughs> Justin's uh, 
on you're call. Like a, you're like a musical genius. I'm just like, <laughs> I was like, uh, I should be a DJ, but it's all in my mouth. All, I have no other skills. You know, I wish it is in your mouth. I actually wish that um, you know, seeing little Drew do this right now, right? Our little our little guy um get into uh baby true uh spin tables and stuff like that that didn't get as popular until after I was out of high school and so like that what, turntables yeah turntables and, and mixing your own music and DJing like my friend had the techniques it's like everybody has it now like everybody does really it. oh yeah what are they scratching there's no it's more not even like a yeah, novelty because, anymore huh? well what it is is now it's just it's easy right and it's super accessible you can get some really cool tech shit that like all you need is and it's all digital right so you can mm-hmm. have the two tracks playing digitally and you can you're doing this with your fingers but you're not really scratching the records it's so oh it's cheating yeah. It is, but it's allowed almost anyone to get in the market. And I wish, because I, I think that's cool and I'm into music. Spe- Maybe we should buy a pair here. Speaking of this, hmm. speaking it'll of be this. Another, it'll, be like the, 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 it'll be like the tobacco bi- pipes we bought and we never used. Dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's invest in something else. I, I like remember those, I was though. telling you guys when we were driving the other day, like I'm so fascinated with Spotify right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. These guys are fucking doing things, bro. Yeah. So uh, I feel like an old man yeah, saying- Yeah, they're making moves. I feel like an old man saying this because- I remember, uh, so th- this is my, two, I'm going to share my 2018, like, goals uh, for with everybody here in 2017. Like, uh, last year it was the read the book thing, and that's, and I'll, I'll maintain all the things that were important to me from last year, but to add on to that, uh, basketball, snowboarding, and then listening to music. Mm-hmm. And what, what that, why that's a goal for me is, these were all things that were a big part of my youth, and things that... Uh, I have found that when I'm I'm in that place, I'm in a, in a really good place. I'm like really happy. I'm very present, uh, and it provides a lot of joy and balance in my life. So I'm going to get back to incorporating more of it. So part of that whole process was getting back on my Spotify and getting back to listening to music. Last night, I took off all by myself for like an hour and a half walk and just listened to music and was reading lyrics. So when I was a kid and then when I was heavy into music, I would buy the CDs. Mm-hmm. I would Get open them up, jacket and- uh, put them on my head, and I would read. I'll read all the songs, all the lyrics, and like mm-hmm. the history. I was way into all that stuff. Do people uh, even do that anymore, uh, bro? Well, yeah, you can me? look up. There's whole websites devoted to lyrics of songs. So fuck yeah. that. Spotify, when you have the upgraded thing, does that. So oh, really? while you're listening, I'll show you guys when we get off air. That's when cool. you're listening, not only does it give you the lyrics, but it even would tell you. It tells you the history behind the song and how it was created. That's oh, awesome. this was a beef between this person and this person. They, they, he wrote that in retaliation. This and then it's, it's another way to sell the song too. Oh, it's uh-huh. it's brilliant. It's uh-huh. brilliant marketing. It's and it's you could just totally make something up because in reality it's like I got high and just make, <laughs> made up a song. Like, yeah, this was uh, yeah. broke up with my girlfriend. I was eating and, a bunch of Doritos. And, it's yeah. just really just smart. And I know who I know the demographic that it's catering to because I was that kid. I was the kid that would eat that up. I would. I mean, it's so nice now. You could just sit there on your phone. Go to the song you want to find out all about it. Listen, and we're to gonna it. be on Spotify soon, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, I was yeah. always really into the artwork. I just loved album covers and jackets and like what because it was funny because you'd see like bands like Tool or bands like Primus. You know, they put a lot of like that weird art that they attached themselves to, and it, it like was so distinctive, like to that mm. band. You know, they kind of kept that. I love theme going. It was a cool thing. I love that. I love heavy metal shirts. I, love I do too. Heavy metal. My favorite. Yeah. yeah. They're so grotesque and terrible. Yeah. 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 I didn't really realize it when I was Cannabis Core. Yeah, but <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now that I'm a now fine. that I'm a parent, I'm like, oh my God. I know. <laughs> like entrails the and shit they, What are they drawing yeah. on these yeah. t shirts? But totally. they're so cool, right? Yeah. There's nothing like an they old, are. an old heavy metal concert t shirt that you've had for fifteen years. Dude, dude you know what? Like they're worth that. a lot of money, dude. If dude, you, they're, they're the best. Dude, oh, if you yeah. have, have concert tees. It's if you have them in good condition, because they stop they'll they'll they're they're limited edition many times, right? I know. That's what yeah. sucks though, because the best ones are the ones on that, that, are, tour. that are worn and faded are my favorite. You know, it's yeah. it's got a hole in it. It's I've never worn. been to a metal concert ever. Oh what? Slap never. you in the dick. Yeah. Well what? I, don't, I mean, I don't know if it, it constitutes that, but I anyway. Mean, I think it does. It kind of does. You should punch yourself in the dick, actually. Yeah, I did earlier. Probably. How are you how are you this Have you ever been in a Mosh pit? You're such a no. big rock fan. No. You ever been in a mosh pit? No. What is it, bro? You're not oh. a concert guy? Huh? You're not a concert guy? No, I'm not. I'm not a big concert guy. Wow. At least yeah. I don't think I am. I, was gonna I don't s- know. I love that you're open minded enough to you say listen. to actually say maybe I don't yeah. think I am because it's just like your traveling yes, thing. Just like your thing like of you going just on realize, your, your wow, camping cool. and, and kayaking and getting lost. Well, and let's that go, whole, dude. Take me to a fucking metal. Okay. That, I got you. You just said that? I got you. We yeah. got you on, on record. 
But yeah, we're taking you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, but yeah. where? Who? Well, we'll go see. Okay, I got. I take care. Yeah, we'll just figure it out. Does we'll Rage still? Do they still tour? No. If they no, Damn but if it, they fuck. did, we're uh, absolutely that's a given. Wrong. Well, but I want to go to some evil tool, shit. We, though. we just missed yeah. Tool. At, at, that uh, would have been not, amazing. That's that cool. Would, that yeah. would have been cool. Yeah, no, I'll take you to something like that. We'll go yeah. for sure. I mean, uh, you know, it's coming up, but it's not. I want to listen metal. to some. M- I used to. Shit. I used to go to Primus concerts every New Year's Eve. That was like. But why are they so cool? Like, explain it to me. Because it's the experience of it, man. Like you actually like watch people play musical instruments and interact. The, the it's just like when you go to see a movie, you know, at the theater, and like everybody, you have this. There's this energy behind it that everybody gets involved. This group flow thing. What's the crowd like? It depends. It depends on the vibe that night. It changes, you know. Like sometimes there's an angry crowd, you know, and like some bands get roasted for it, and then like the main band comes on, everybody explodes and goes crazy and ape shit. Or like sometimes they suck and you get boo, you know, they get people like angry. It's crazy. Well, yeah, most man. people that most people that go to concerts are pretty fanatical or ex- you know know the band really really well. So the whole arena a lot of times is like singing the song and like so uh, it's yeah. like this. I mean, I've been to concerts, but not a metal con. I've been to a few concerts, but nothing major. So I like I like I like metal better than I like hip hop. Like, and I love hip hop music, but I I fucking I know, saw Lady Gaga. I agree. See, the thing is, I like hip hop, and I like you know, it just it doesn't translate as well like in concert because you're like on a mic and like there's. Well, a lot of a lot of hip hop today is got the synthesizer. So it doesn't got, really. It's just a bunch it's, of. It's yeah. produced, right? It's yeah. a really. It's it's produced up and heavy metal. There's instruments, drums, in, yeah, instruments. It's Dude. it's and when you see that live and you watch somebody play that instrument live, it's different than actually hearing it come through. On so I definitely think there's a big difference between watching hip hop and rock live and uh-huh. versus putting because I'd rather have hip hop in my headphones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I right. like it in my headphones because I can hear studio clear. wise like yes. yeah, hip hop wins on that. But right, yeah, so I can pick up the lyrics live. But rock, yeah, man, listen to. Rock, I would love rock. to see uh, like Rush. Are they still? Do they tour still? I, I think know. they still do some tours here and there, like right? Like 95, dude. Let's you know get a little more updated. All right. Yeah. Well, okay, <laughs> my bad. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> so part of this I mean, this, this whole like Rolling Stones, you know? getting back onto listening <laughs> to music is just so I can stay because it, it's very naive of us to think that there's not music that's new and up and coming right now that each of us wouldn't love to listen to. It so, all sucks. Which, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. That's so old man. To, that's such an old man thing to say yeah. some shit like that. Like, music today is terrible. Like, you just sound old when you say that. It's what like, is this garbage? Well, it's you like, know what's funny? Like, I, so, and I was kind of going along the same, the, the same road as you as far as getting back into music. And, uh, like, I used to go to, like, the Warp Tour and stuff. Like, I used to like to go to the tours between or like festivals and stuff because then you actually find out Let's like do bands that. that you've never Let's do been that. exposed to otherwise and like especially like the warp tour is like it's now it's more of like an eclectic kind of uh gathering of different it used to be just punk music but now it's like metal rock you know punk Let's music do that. well that's why so that's when you, when you were younger you would you would be consuming so much you consumed a lot of garbage but then you pick up on a lot of things that not a lot of people are picking up on because yeah. you're on the cutting edge and so what i do is i keep you know, a handful of twenty to twenty-five year olds close to me. Yeah, so you're that's like a, like just a vampire, like a creepy old man. You're like no, a vampire. no. What well, I mean, blood, you blood boys. Like yeah, you call them blood boys <laughs> because I do. I, I I appreciate I appreciate music and I love knowing what's what's new, what's hot, what's up and yeah, coming. Smart. So that so I have I have a couple cousins. I have some nephews and stuff that are in the early twenties that were just like me that fucking love music, listen to it before it even gets released. You know, so they know like, oh, this is awesome. This is dropping. Yeah, and so that's part of my secret weapon because what I found was if the people that do that because i was like this it consumes a good piece of my life it's a nice piece of the pie it dude. takes time yeah it takes time you have like, room for it back then because you right, didn't fill it with all right, this other life right yeah. uh, other things are taking a, pri- a, pri- a priority yeah, right too responsible but there's something to take from that too right so you know business making money reading books growing all that stuff super important has become more of a priority than me listening to music but you know going back and revisiting some of these things that i love and i'm passionate about I found that you know what there was there's a part of me that's kind of missing that because I become so con- I'm no different now I'm just con- more consumed with this and so trying and there's to- a value to it right yeah. right I mean I, we were playing ball the other day Katrina and I so great we went down I can't there. wait to hear the story by the way <laughs> oh, right. we'll, we'll re- revisit it <laughs> yeah. I want to hear about your basketball yeah I'm playing a while yeah yeah I haven't I haven't played in a in a long how time how good were you 
Uh, you know what? I actually was I was happy with myself. I told Katrina that I didn't have high expectations. I know uh, what was I, your shot uh, percentage. So okay, now that's what I what I was I was impressed with. You know, I only played I only I played two different days this last week, and I and I one game. That's it. I'm smart enough. Oh, okay. I'm smarter than you are. Like to go and uh, do three games. Well, I know I'm not conditioned for that right now. Yeah. So I got bullied into that. I, my my shot, my rebounding, my blocking, all that stuff was like it was like riding a bike for me. I didn't miss it. Didn't miss a beat. It felt, and that's what actually got me re- excited because I was like, oh my god, that flow state right away, man. Like as soon as I get touch a ball again, it just it's like like yeah. riding a bike for me. So that part was cool. But cardiovascular wise, very humbling and eye opening for myself because I know, and it, you know what, it was like a slap in the face because. We talk so much shit about cardio on this show that I feel like I've identified with that message so much to try and get to people to understand, like, you don't have to run all the time. Yeah. That now I fucking suck at it so bad. Well, you need it for endurance. If you want endurance, dude, right. you got to do it. Right. So, yeah. you know, so I actually went for a run the other day, too. Like, I, you know, you went guy, for a run? I went for a run. Oh, my God, dude. Right, right. So What's I'm, happening? Someone's going to see you and be like, <laughs> I know. Hypocrite. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm thinking that. But you're as, not doing for fat loss. No, I'm doing it to play basketball. You're I want to play ball. Yeah, yeah, I want to play ball. I want to snowboard. I want to do these things. So, Anyways, we played. No, my favorite part about playing. So is this was, like a pickup game somewhere? Yeah. yeah the, so just random. Yeah, people? right. At the random gyms, you go to Twenty Four Hour Fitness. There's always games that are running. You show up, and then you're on the next. You know, if you're next in oh, line, okay. you get in the court, right? So now, what I love to do, and this is actually how Katrina and I met over seven years ago, because those that don't know or haven't heard me say on the show before, she's a Division One collegiate level athlete. So she played basketball all four years in college. She was all defense every year. Like so, she's fucking really good, and so. When we go to the courts, it's always great because, you know, there's not a lot of girls out there playing the pickup games, you know. Pickup games can be a little rough and it's, you know, you don't see a lot of chicks at the at the 24-hour fitness mm-hmm. playing ball with all the guys. Mm-hmm. But, of course, she does, you know. So her and I are waiting to to play the next game and they're like, hey, you guys want to play? I'm like, yeah, we'll play. We'll run. I look at her, like, you want to run one game? She's like, yeah, let's run one game. So we run one game and then right when you first start, everybody's kind of like the other guys are matching you up. Like, okay, you take him, you take him, yeah. right, you take her. You take and the I sweaty, always fat and guy. I always know there's always like I always get this little shit grin on my face when I see because you could see who the kid on that team who's the most unathletic, you know, he's the extra. He's the fifth yeah. guy that like yeah, yeah, sh- shouldn't yeah. be out there, never played organized Showed ball. Should have kind of late. Right. Yeah. And so what do they do? Automatically pair him against <laughs> Katrina. Katrina, right? He says, like, you go like Katrina. And I love when that happens because I'm like, oh, this is gonna be great. Uh, <laughs> Wait until they realize that she's better than most them. of their whole team, much oh, less shit. you put her on the worst guy. <laughs> and then like halfway through they're having to stop. Hold it because she's she got three. Was she just schooling on his oh, ass. Oh, dude, she had three. She stole the ball three times from him. She blocked him. Like, and dude, humbling when a chick fucking swats oh, your dude. shit, dude. <laughs> when you when you go up for a layup and a chick fucking yeah. meets you at the hoop and fucking swats your shit, right, dude. Right, okay. <laughs> you, okay. Your, your yeah. dick just crawls I'm up done. inside of you, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. 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 Feel like a little oh, bitch. After I'm gonna go shoot hoops, you know, oh. and, like work on my and skills. Then, and then all yeah. your buddies are Somewhere like, else. "Oh shit, bro, she just schooled you." <laughs> so and then they end up switching over, putting a better person on herself. So yeah. We went and played, ran game and won, of course, and uh, you know. So it's I love. Were you uh, hurting the next day? Uh, I, you know what? The arches of my feet yes. more than anything. Your else. feet require a lot of oh, strength to do that shit. Dude, uh, that's, forgot, and that's one of the first things I noticed. And uh, my, I almost rolled my ankle just because of like the explosiveness of the jumping and all that. And like I, I landed on it, and I could just feel like my foot gripping for dear life. And then yeah. <laughs> later on, those muscles were just not like feeling it. You know, any yeah. cut I made after that, it was like, oh, ooh, ah. I, I definitely, I'm in, I am in the worst cardiovascular shape I've ever been in my life, no doubt. Yeah. Hundred percent, and th- and to me, this was the for sure the it confirmed it. You know, I I, I could have speculated that because I haven't been doing anything like that, but uh, because I've played ball for so for so long and, and consistently in my life, to see how I felt like mm. this is no exaggeration. You know, we were really like her, her and I when we went down there to shoot. We're like, you know, we don't want to play. We know we're not in shape to play. We got to get in shape to play. But of course, you know, we're all we're competitors, and we're like, ah, fuck, I want to play. Let's play a game. You know, let's play a game. The first fucking up and down one time the rest of the time i was like fucking walking i could not believe it and never in my life even when i'm the most deconditioned after a summer of not exercising eating like shit then going back to playing ball i could at least like mentally push through and keep myself running and going i could not dude it was that it was for like i was like and i knew that going in trying to like moderate 
the energy and like the amount of like effort I was putting in somewhat. And then I stole the ball and went for that like full court layup. And I'm like, yeah. And then I uh, like <laughs> fucked myself up the whole rest of the day. Right. From that one play. Right. So team no cardio over here. Oh yeah. We'll was, be doing some cardio. I was huffing and puffing. A <laughs> you bit. know, the good news is it comes back. Cardio tends yeah, no, to come already back. Oh dude, back. I, the, I did two days in a row. Took a couple of days off and then and then played again, yeah. but already the difference on way better on day three. How did your movement feel though? I felt like my movement was on point. So here's the thing that was really cool. So my buddy, him and I are texting, who I used to play ball with all the way into my until I was thirty with him, uh, like rec leagues and stuff. I sent him a message. I said, "Hey, bro, I'm back to playing ball." He's like, "Oh God, dude, you crazy?" He's like, uh, "My," he says, "My knees hurt just hearing you say that." And I was like, you know what? The irony is, I said, my knees, my ankles, my joints feel better now than they did yep. five, six years ago when I was playing with you because I've addressed mobility issue and, and so much. I'm like lighter and more oh, organized with my I've, movement patterns, I've, everything. My like going into the hoop was fluid and smooth. It's just, yeah, I was so, just dog tired. So I'm not, I'm not fluid yet. And I don't, I know I'm missing a step and like I definitely feel that missing, but I, the the normal like like normally right away after I play a game I, my IT would probably bother me then my hips would then my mm-hmm. low back like none of that like I felt really really good and so that was really exciting for me this is part of again 2018 for me you know I I'm definitely am not focused on aesthetics whatsoever right now I'm a hundred percent focused on these other aspects of my life that that involve health and fitness for me so. Uh, hopefully that doesn't bum out like you know all the the bodybuilding fans that I have that love to see me change my physique. But I'm sure knowing me, like I'll be on that kick for a while and then I'll miss being the buff guy walking it's around. It's fun, man. It's yeah. fun to take your body through all these different things. I think everybody it should, is. man. I really, I really believe that that th- this is th- this is I- is ideal for everybody at one point to move in and out of these different modalities and ways of training. They all have their different benefits and carries, and they all have their detriments when you stay in one for too long. So well, think about it. If you get to the point where you're just enjoying what you're doing, you never stop. Yep. You mm-hmm. never stop, right? Yep. So you're always moving. You're always doing something. You're just changing what that is, right? And that's, I think, awesome. I think that's great. It gives yeah. you good, well-rounded, uh, you know, progress with your body. Uh, you know, and you're smart. You're not. You're not an idiot. So you're not going to go hurt yourself. Yeah, or I'm at least not try to. Easing my way in for sure. You yeah, know, yeah, I, yeah you exactly. Know, I mean, old school me, just less than five, six years ago. You know, mm-hmm. I could get on a court and run back three to five games, no problem. And right yeah. now, I know I'm not even in that condition. So yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever pick up basketball. <laughs> I've gone 38 years of my life without playing oh, yeah. a lot of it. You know, I don't think I will. I, but I, I, I do w- miss. I do miss grappling. I do miss grappling. At some point, I will go back to doing. I could that. see. You know, and yeah. I, I would love to see you do that because I feel like the same experience that I'm experiencing right now, you will experience with grappling because you had such a passion for it. You were really good at it. You moved all the way up to what you purple belt yeah. is what you were up to. So you've you've put some hours yeah. in. And I bet you that, and and this was before Those patterns are there. You well, and then don't. and then we, my it's knowledge just getting started, man. My no, knowledge and yeah. yeah, no, that's the heart. That's what I'm going through well, right dude, now, dude. Here's the thing, like, you know, there's nothing more frustrating than than doing something that I know I'm really good at right. and not being good. I, just, well, you know, yeah, bro, it hurts. Like I, the thing about training jujitsu and uh, all the time is that you just everything hurts all the time, no matter what. Like I did for six years, and I still yeah. was like, oh, this is twisted. That's tweaked. That's it's just one of those constant things. It's, so. You know, but it'd be yeah. interesting to hear now that you you've addressed and done more mobility and the fact that we have a different outlook on like flow. And so I think that I just got to go easier. That's such yeah, and that's how I'm playing right now. Like I'm mm-hmm. experiencing the benefits of getting into flow state, and then the what I, what I'm getting from that without having to push, be at an elite yeah. level. I'm not signing up for some fucking team right now. I'm like just picking up some ball, playing slower, not trying to get crazy right now, but really, really enjoying. Uh, some of the benefits that I'm I'm getting from that, you know. Yeah. So. You know, my son's playing basketball. I told you guys that. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's got a game actually tonight, so I'm gonna go watch right. him play. Oh, he did. They won their first game. Yeah, it's his right. team yeah. won their first. And how game. did he do? You know, he he's trying. He's trying really hard. He's definitely not the the best kid on the team. He's not the worst, but he's he goes out there and he tries, which I really appreciate. And oh. I've given him a couple stretches to do because he's super tight in his hamstrings. And uh, he's been doing them. And I mean, it's really it's really cool to watch. Well, coaches at that level love that man. I mean, if you're the kid, I was that kid. I was the kid. I was not the most athletic, talented kid growing up. I you're was just but, hungry to get. But better. But I fucking outworked most everybody for yeah. sure. And I mean, then you get better. You know, you get better when you do that. And, and coaches love you for that because they always want that guy 
on their team that they can use in his example of like, listen, if you actually fucking put some effort into it, worked hard like this shit, but over here. Oh, it's <laughs> great when you actually see things pay off too. And like, same thing, like my son played uh, Sunday and it was like, uh, I actually like spent time like a couple of days before that really like just going over like the fundamentals and, uh, you know, dribbling, passing all the stuff and like shooting and uh, in the game. Cause like, he's not, necessarily like the best player in the, t- the team either and like doesn't really understand the sport yet i mean he's only like seven so uh for him to like get the ball turn i'm like shoot and he shoots and he makes it and then like this happened a couple times he made like three yeah. in the game and it was like a really short game but like i was just like blown away because you know soccer i didn't see any th- effort or anything in that direction this is He's one so of those young too, that's like yeah but it's still it's like yeah. finally <laughs> for me to see like something kind of like translate and pay off like that was great so i'm awesome. trying to remember how old i was or what what was that pivotal moment where i went from just like kind of fucking around playing sports to like really mm-hmm. like watching. trying yeah like yeah. really trying i, I think for me i think it was i mean i remember in soccer i think it was like the first time i scored a goal or something like that like you, you felt it yeah when you feel that excitement of what it's like to do that and like you see that you can do that like oh shit and that yeah. oh he got pumped like he was like like confident all of a sudden you right. know that's why he made a couple more he was just like yeah i can, yeah. I can do this that's awesome you know? no for me it was it was weights weights did that for me uh, any strength sport, arm wrestling, weights, and then when I did grappling. But otherwise, I never, like I said, I never played really played anything else. But when I started lifting, I got real serious about it, real fast. Yeah, real fast. So, Doug, where, where were those? What brand were those sardines that we just had? Those are Thrive Market. They're the brand. Thrive Market brand. Oh, did you eat some of those? So yeah. So, so, all right. So tell me how they are compared so, to the other ones. They're really good. They were big, full. Honestly, they're as good I as the other ones that you, that you were, rep that all the time. Yes, they're big, full like plump sardines me and doug were in the back over there because i know you guys would get pissed thank off. you for doing that yeah and we shared a can of sardines from thrive but they're the thrive oh, market that, brand and they're they're cheap what how much expensive are they in ex- more in ex- or less inexpensive yeah than, they're they? yeah they're decent they're, what were they how much less are they like 75 cents or almost a dollar less um than the other brand that i get which is um god what's that brand that i get yeah you get the same brand i've seen you eat it a bunch uh, of times. it's called uh i can't remember anyway um i like that they have their own brand and i feel like that's Probably the future of their business. Don't you? Yeah. Oh, Don't well, you that, think so? so most okay. So uh, I mean, you know how much money Costco makes off Thrive, their Thrive, market, Thrive Market. Thrive yeah. Market. Like if I understand their business model the same way, it's very similar to like a like a vitamin shop business. So they they carry all these other products that all that are most popular that people want right for a really really low price and they don't make very much margins if any at all on those items where they make their most margins is on their own stuff and that's the idea is drive people to the website so with with all these popular awesome brands for awesome deals where they're not making a lot of money mm-hmm. knowing that eventually you're going to try some of their well, products well, where they make most of their money. Well, look at the difference in price. Smart. A, oh, the, yeah, Wild Planet. That's the one. Wild you. Planet is, and which I like. They got great, great products too. $3.25 a can on on the Thrive Market site. Oh, so so have- it's even cheaper on the market site because if you go to Whole Foods, it can cost you as much as $5. Uh, their Thrive Market brand sardines two nineteen, so it's over a dollar cheaper. So that's cool. They have their own brand, and they have Thrive. Yeah. Thri- and they, oh, look at that! They have a bunch of them, dude. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sardines are good, dude, and they're not anchovies. People confuse sardines with anchovies, and they yeah, think they're going to the taste. Huh? Anchovies are hairy, dude. I anchovies, which I like too, but anchovies go with cheese and bread and stuff like that. Sardines are not super fishy. Very, very good source of omega three fatty acids, and because they're low on the food chain. They're very low in uh, like things like uh, like heavy metals and mercury. So the thing about fish is, if you eat like the big fish, like swordfish and tuna, yeah, they're gonna pick up all those heavy metals. Yeah, but uh, sardines are pretty clean. They're I pretty clean. So I didn't know that. That's a it's a healthier way. Not only that too, it, the the price point for the amount of protein that you're getting is pretty fucking solid. It's like thirty grams of protein for a can. You get a good dose of. Omega three fatty acids. Right, you'll never find another meal for under under three dollars that you can get that much. Protein. You can get a can of tuna, which is okay, but the problem with tuna again, you don't get the fat as much fatty acids, and you also get sometimes mercury, or or if you eat too much of it, you'll get the mercury. Well, and and I don't think I don't think uh, that'd be interesting for ounce to ounce uh, sardine versus actual tuna. Tuna's cheaper. I mean, I think probably cheaper. Mm-hmm. Is it per, yeah. for protein? I believe so. Mm. I believe so. We need to do the math. They also sell canned chicken. You ever seen canned chicken at the grocery store? I have. And you know what? That's I had fucking a, weird, dude. I that had a girlfriend weird. that used to eat that all the time, and I just couldn't do it. Huh. Chicken in a can. Yeah. I can't do it, man. 
I know yeah. some it people, seems like a bodybuilder's seems, dream, right? Yeah, I know, it, right? No, that's exactly. It was a competitor. You know, my my girl that we used to compete. When you like, get tired of tuna, it's like, yeah, let's just uh, do this with chicken. Did her fart smell a lot? Oh, mm. she, she was. Oh. I know no, she probably I listens. I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> He's trying not to be mean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, bodybuilder chicks no different than bodybuilder dudes. They have smelly farts. Dropping some bombs. Yeah, you know who you are. Yeah. Blow, blow. Oh, she, she blew that hot you air know, all over you. you know, <laughs> yeah. While we're speaking about walking through the gym, you think well, it's the big guy. While we're like, talking about food, having sex. food and yeah. stuff, oh, I've been on. meaning to uh, to address oh. this on the podcast because uh, ever since I started doing like the Organifi like cookies and recipes like for Christmas time and holidays, right now I've been doing it a lot. I'm getting flooded with uh, DMs. What's the recipe? What's this? What's that? Like all this stuff. We should come up with a recipe book. Yeah. And part of the reason why I stopped was because I was getting so many of them. It was kind of, I was like, fuck, this sucks. Now I can't get to other people with other questions in my DMs. And all I'm all I'm answering is food shit, which I don't like doing. But so l- let me just tell you guys where, where I'm getting the recipes is off the Organifi website. So when you go to the Organifi website- So it's OrganifiShop.com. Right. Go to OrganifiShop.com and then go to the blog. When you click on the blog- That's at the bottom. So to get to blog, you have to scroll to the bottom. Right. It's scroll all the way down. Yeah. Click on blog. Once you click on blog, then it's a it's a scroll, right? So you scroll all the way down and there's like, I think, 20 something pages- of blogs that are written that actually go with recipes. So you can read Oh, they have chocolate banana muffins. Right, you can read the blogs if you want, or you can just get the recipe from the blog, but they have all kinds of different ones that use all the different products. What is this Cacao Bliss... I have we haven't tried Cacao Bliss yet. I know. Tell, cacao Bliss. Dude, Shauna, balls. Shauna, yeah, I know she's a listener. Shauna, I'm talking to you right now. We sh- Mind Pump should be some of the first people <laughs> to get this shit. When I get inbox, somebody else be eating fucking cacao shit saying it's the best yeah. they've ever had. We haven't even had it yet. Yeah. Like so. The fuck does that work? I love cacao and balls. I'm in. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Suck on them chocolate oh, salty yeah. balls. Oh, all of it. So there you go. Put, put them in your mouth. Bird. This quaz brought to you by Organify. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com. And use a coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Coach Wardle. Do you believe that sport and other physical activities build character or characters? So there's two questions here. One is, does it build character? And number two, does it promote character? <laughs> is but yes and yes. Yes, yeah, definitely. Both. Yes, yes yeah, and yes. Definitely. Sure. I think any organized activity. That's, a, that's a Coach Josh, right? Josh, yeah, yeah, Josh yeah. Wardle. Hmm. Good friend. Fr- Shout out to Josh. Yep. yep. So uh, any organized activity that is competitive is going to build or promote certain attributes. And it doesn't have to be a physical activity, although physical activities... I think are some of the best because when you're playing something that's physical, you're feeling, you know, fatigue, you're feeling pain, you're feeling like lots of physical sensations, which can strengthen your character. Um, I noticed this when I would train certain clients with, with heavy weights in particular females where they were, they weren't these, you know, some of these women had never done anything very difficult when it came to physical pursuits. They didn't play sports. Now I'm having them lift weights. I'm having them push themselves and because they're going through that physical pain and they feel confident afterwards, they feel like they can handle more regular stuff mm-hmm. just because oh, they were able to handle that. There's no doubt in my mind that I'm not sitting here right now today if it wasn't for sports. Mm-hmm. I'm already statistically at a disadvantage being a kid who grew up in the home and the, and the shit that I went through that I was supposed to be in jail, on drugs, doing shit like that. I 100% attribute that to the 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 community that my parents had me in with church and then with with uh, with sports sports to me and and sports even more so because i even think that the uh the dogmatic side of yeah. of the church and everything like that it, it, later on it was in just life. about the brotherhood yeah. right so uh, with with the sports there's so many parallels that i found in sports with life and business uh, everything from having to work with others to the the amount of effort that you put into it is what you get out of it. Like there's so much of what I had to learn to be successful in sports as a kid has translated into the person that I am today. Well, what about, oh, yeah. adversity, what, everything? What about learning to losses. Yep, and what about learning to like rely on people or or exactly. or be able to act, or be a role player? Yes. You know like like find like right. how you contribute and how you contribute best. This is all stuff that you learn about yourself going through the process of like where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, 
what you know part of your weakness where you can improve so something that i could do to tangibly uh you know improve my performance out there on the field to contribute more or like things like that like there's just so much um i got from sports that uh, that's why i tended to actually um gravitate more towards the ones that had the most um i guess physicality the most like dangerous sort of um uh, environment. Yeah. Because for me, like I felt like I just, I wanted more of a challenge. I wanted more things that, um, you you really pressed me to my limits so I can understand like, um, you know, like my, how I was going to respond, how I was going to overcome what I could do in those more extreme situations, uh, to overcome them, get stronger. And I just, I really love the process of getting stronger. Do you guys? Do you guys? Rem- well, I know you didn't play sports, but I mean, Justin, do you remember like sp- specific like lessons that you took from like a coach or like I remember like mm-hmm. being yelled at on the soccer field as a kid, like do your fucking job, you know, yeah. like do yeah. your job. And I remember being hearing in practice, like listen, every position, every player on this team has a specific job. Do your job, and collectively together we are successful. Don't do your job, and the whole team fails. Yeah, and learning that, like, and and applying that in life is so true, man. Like when you get into the business world, and you have employees, and you have a staff, you have people above you, you have people below you, and you have to work with all these people with this collective goal to be successful. Yeah, huge. So that, and like me, understanding that, um, you know, what it takes to be a leader. Uh, in in a certain situation because for me I, I would just like to do my own thing forever and like people would trust and rely on me to do my own thing but then stepping in more of a leadership position where now I have to tell everybody else here's the game plan here's what we're doing here's how we like execute um, that was another challenge for me to then understand like here's the best ways to get people to respond to you to get to go to the workouts like a lot of my responsibility was just to get people in the off season to come in to improve on their skill set and, uh, you know, like going from high school then to college was a whole nother monster. I need to learn everybody else's positions now. Like I was so good at my own position. Now I have to learn everybody else and how that whole overarching, you know, the, the game from like the bird's eye view looks. And, and that way uh, I got better as, as, a, as an individual because I started to understand now. Uh, what the field looked like, you know, from a even broader scale. Now, there's also there's also the bonding that you get with people when you suffer together. Mm-hmm. Now, I've experienced this in other totally. in other ways. I mean, uh, having worked in in fitness for as long as I have, and being parts of teams and gyms, and being in situations where, you know, you need to hit a particular sales goal, and it's down to the last minute, and everybody's been working mm-hmm. bell to bell for days, and we're there, and then it gets pulled off, and we did it together. Um, it's that common, like, you know, it's that we, we did this together that creates some pretty remarkable bonds and it comes from struggle. It doesn't usually come from just ease and success. No, that's a great point. Of course. I I mean, I I could play devil's advocate with this a little bit too, as going toward, towards the other part of the question that Wardle said, which is the characters, it does develop characters. And there are some people that, uh, take what they've learned from sports. So they they identify so much with Mm -hmm. sports that Mm -hmm. they become very competitive with everything that they do, and maybe they were like a star. It doesn't player. always translate. The it, same d- it doesn't. So life. there, there, there is like a there is a other side to this coin, right? Where somebody who, yeah, you've had a lot of success from playing sports, but then you get into the real world and you realize that maybe you don't play well with it. Maybe you were talented <clears throat> and success- successful in sports, and you got and you were successful. But those same tactics are like you know crushing people around you that like you know maybe need a different type of motivation. Right. It, rem- like, it reminds me. I remember having a boss of mine for many years who was a marine, and yeah. his his way of leadership was all, all derived from his experience of being a marine, and and like that's how he approached leading, and and he's been successful that way. So who the fuck am I to be to challenge him and say like no, I think that's a stupid idea actually, and I would, I still would because I'd be like no. Not everybody in here is a fucking marine, dude. Right. You can't you can't lead everybody that way. It's not this do it do it now, ask questions later. Like you want people that are outside the outside the box thinkers and challenge the things that you may be putting or telling them to do. You don't always want everybody to be order takers or else you're only gonna be so successful. So yeah. I think the same thing applies with people that have done sports their whole life and identify with being an I athlete. I think anything that has a lot of power, anything that can invoke a lot of emotion or feeling um, has the ability to provide incredible benefit, but it also has the ability to create um, and and provide some some negatives. Um, let's talk about tribalism. You will you will not oh, see. Yeah. I mean, 
I I cannot believe some of the stories I read when you see football games or baseball games or basketball games and you see fans who are not even fucking playing. Yeah. Be, Bro, get you into, remember what happened? Just get into fights. The hell out of Do you remember other. the the Dodger Giants thing yes. that happened just like three uh, years horrific. ago? It's crazy. It's fucking. It's crazy. It's a Practically fucking killed the guy. It's dude. a sports. It's a sports game, and so that's the characters. That's when people identify so strongly, right, with the team, with or the with team, the, or their sport. sport, where they're willing to fight each other over a bunch of millionaires who are running around on a field. Who that's what they do for a living, and they couldn't give a shit about you. Yeah, I mean, it's it's insane to me that you know that that happens, but it's because it has well, you know, that, that much power. Remember, I said something not that long ago. This was maybe about three or four months ago, and I got some heat for it because I took a jab at I think LeBron James, who, by the way, I'm a huge fan of him as an athlete because he he was talking outwardly about some political bullshit. I think it was oh, around yeah. the whole fucking yeah. uh, Cap- Kaepernick Kneeling. bullshit. Yeah, and I was just like, yeah, just fucking stick to your sport, play your sport. And then I and I don't remember what else I said on the show, but then everybody was giving me flack. And it's like the way the way people were giving me flack, though, were like defending LeBron James to like a team. Because like, they're on his tribe. I'm like, you don't even fucking know the guy. For all you know, the guy, tribe, the, guy, the guy kills children at night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you, you don't, don't know. You don't know. I don't know. You know. I don't think so. I think he's a good guy, too, but I'm not going to defend them to a T because somebody else said something about them. I'm like, it's really funny it's, how people attach themselves. It's because themselves. they identify so strongly because that tribal mentality, which has got some benefits and got some negatives. But then there's another side to it, too. There's also the people that play sports that identify so strongly with their sport that they become characters. For example, hmm. if we were, if you know, if you're an artist and you were to draw a picture of a bodybuilder and what he looks like when he's not in the gym, I bet you're going to put him in a particular type of shoes, particular type of pants, fanny pack, you know, the whole deal, atomic shoes, you know, the blown out pants, whatever. You got your power lifters, going to got a little bit of a belly, probably hairier, you know, a little thicker, you know, you, uh, maybe wearing like work boots, right? You've got your crossfitter, you've got your, you know, your football guy, your baseball guy, your basketball guy, your, right. and, and, you know, there, your, there's cr- a uniform, your crossfitter, these, your, yeah, and it's, it's like, characters. We, oh dude, we saw this with kettlebell sport when, when the kettle, when we hosted mm-hmm. the kettlebell sport tournament. One of the reasons, one of the reasons that got me excited, is as a marketer, I saw an opportunity when I looked at these people coming to compete, and I saw that they wore the same clothes, they all had the same gym bag, they were using the same chalk, yeah. they had the same kind of verbiage, and I'm like, holy shit, this is a tribe, yeah. this is all tribalism, and it's on some in some ways, I understand why we developed it, you know, through evolution and how it can be beneficial and can get people to work together, right. but on this side, you start to identify with these things. And it can become very negative. And I tell you something right now, one of the worst things you could do is identify with your body because if there's one thing that's guaranteed to fucking wither and change and go away, it's your body. Mm-hmm. And that is a very tough lesson to learn if you're so identified with your body that you can't, you know, you know how hard it is to age if you're so identified with your strength and muscle and leanness and how awesome you perform. You imagine how difficult that would be to age. Right. We see this all the time in Hollywood with these, you know, these actors and actresses who are on growth hormone and anabolics and plastic surgery and all that stuff. So yeah, you could definitely it could definitely turn you into a character, but anything that's got power, anything at all that has power uh, over people for good has an incredible amount of power. For that bad. being said, I, I mean, I, and I think you guys would agree, and because you both have kids that are in sports, the God, the, the difference, and I know there's statistics on this. The kids that play sports, their their GPA, yep. their likelihood They're of staying, staying out, of, out jail, of trouble. Yeah, they do. They, of course. I, so there's a lot of benefits to having kids involved in sports, and it's not to say that every kid needs to play sports, and no. that you know you should no, force think, your kid to play sports. I'm I, not saying that. I but, think every kid, I think every kid or most kids will benefit from being on a team. So I don't want to necessarily say sports because I think people right, specifically you ro- think you do a robotics team. Like robotics, you could do chess, you could do a debate team, you could do in business, you have teams that you learn to work with. Sure. Uh, some of the strongest uh, right. you know, uh, uh, connections you'll ever see are people who go off to war together. That's a big team. Mm. They'll come back and they'll be lifelong friends. So right. there's definitely benefits from learning how to organize together, work together to achieve a common goal. Well, and I think too, like just the physicality. Like, so if you just like take it for like most sports, like it's this expression of like your physical abilities which you don't really get that like in, in the rest of school. So 
for me, like sports, that was crucial for me because I just, uh, that was something that, um, you know, me to just be able to improve my body and the way that it functions. And it gave me a deeper understanding. That's a great, that's a great point. Like you're, you're making me think of times too, of like what it taught me about like pushing through something, like when I thought I was going to fail and break down, you know, like mm-hmm. when you've had to break through that mental barrier of like, something's not only hard to do, but it's like physically hard for you to do, yes. like where you feel it's like different than right. just like trying to right. think it's, your way through something. Exactly. Right. You, a lot of people quit before mm-hmm. it even gets hard because they don't even know what hard hard is like, or they don't right. even know what real failure with their body. Do you know what your body feels like when it bonks? Do you know what it feels like to vomit because you pushed your body so hard to getting ready for getting in condition for sport or yeah. when you've done that, you're you know, less, a, you're, you're less averse to adversity, you know, right. like, so like things that are physically challenging, like, I, I don't know. I just see sometimes like that's a problem with some kids that I, I notice these days that aren't as physically active. Like it's just, oh, no, they're, not. they're just very averse to like tough situations, you know, even if it's, uh, you know, like just mentally based, like if there's any kind of physical comp- component to it, it's like, ah, right. Next up is double O silk drop. Is Our it girl. possible to be an athlete and be truly healthy? Oh, we're going to stay on this athlete kick. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, we need to define what she <laughs> yes. means. So, uh, this is, I like that you picked this question yeah. because well, we, we had that little debate. Yes. On we, the, we just had a bunch of debate about, about this. Was it on the, what was it on? The, it was on the video. I believe it was the IIFYM video that I did with uh, Jason Phillips. And we were talking, so they were saying how he made a comment on the video of something like, you know, elite athletes don't eat garbage all the time or something like that. And then people are like, yeah, you know, so-and-so is an elite athlete and he eats Pop-Tarts and chicken nuggets every day and so-and-so's. And, uh, and really they missed the whole gist of the video, which was that you can eat for performance and you can eat for longevity, but they're not the same thing. Right. And uh, that's what we're talking about here. So it, now the, the question is, can they be truly healthy? I'm assuming she's referring to optimal long-term longevity health, right? That's what I. Th- that's what I think she's talking about. What she says, truly healthy. Right. Yeah. I, and before you go into this, I think it's yeah. keep in mind what I think Dr. Andy Gaplin said, which I think is so awesome. Which is you're either adapting or you're optimizing right. one or the other. So you right. have to keep that in mind as you go through this. That you know, there's there's pros and cons to both. There's pros. To, to pushing your body like an athlete, and then there's cons to that. And then there's pros to not pushing your body like an athlete, and there's cons to that also. Well, in true healthy, like you were alluding to, like her, like, like talking about longevity and like that pursuit versus like, like right now, I want to be like strong and I want to be able to do this, that, and the other. I want to be able to uh, lift something really heavy. Right. I, I want to have abilities, you know, across the board as far as strength's concerned. Like that may take away from some of the markers of longevity. So it, it's all about like what you're really pursuing uh, as far as like what health means to you. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you an example, right? We know through many, many, many studies that the ideal amount of protein intake for most people to build muscle is around 0.6 to 0.8 grams per pound of body weight for lean individuals. So if you eat around there, you're going to maximize muscle building with your protein intake. Now, for longevity, that's too much protein. For long-term uh, health, you it's you probably want less than that. You probably want more like 0.4 uh, you know, grams per pound of body weight or maybe even a little less it's than like, that. It's like, it's like thinking, think of your car, right, and your engine and how you run your engine. If you were trying to do a drag race, it would not be advantageous for you to drive it at 2,500 RPMs. You're going to lose the race, right? Mm-hmm. But if, you're, if you wanted the motor to last you over five years, 10 years, 15 years, you want that motor to last, it would be advantageous to drive it around 2,500 well, RPMs. Dude, they got to rebuild uh, dragster engines, what, almost every third <laughs> like race? Every race or, yeah, yeah, every race. I, I mean, sometimes. So, you know, if you're, it, you, it's one or the other. Now, here's my advice. My advice is this for the average person that's listening. First of all, most of you listening right now are not competing in any extreme way. You're not at a high level in any particular sport or whatever. You just want to be fit and healthy. Now, some of you are, some of you who are listening, this is the minority, are on that elite level. This message is for you also. I always encourage people to know what their true healthiness is right. or to find that that uh, what that baseline is of true optimal health and then play from there. So now I know mm-hmm. for me to be absolutely at my most healthy, that feel the best, that I eat this particular way, you know, my carbohydrates tend to be around here. These are the foods I avoid. These are the foods I focus on. Now from there, I want to gain five pounds of muscle, mm-hmm. or I want to improve my, you know, my endurance. I want to race a, a marathon, or I want to get my body fat in a single digit. Now I can go from that baseline and push my body 
to be a little bit more extreme. But by nature, uh, extreme is not optimal for long-term health. It just isn't because it's extreme yeah. and it's okay. And you know, it's funny that that pisses people off, well, but well, uh, because people, people that are current athletes right now don't want to, don't want to admit or don't want to think that, that, that they're not healthy. They're not, not healthy. Health. Right. Especially since the, even it, when their joints are screaming at them. Well, and even if they're not right, even yeah, if, they're, even let's, if say they're you're, let's say you're, let's say you're 20 years old. And when, when we, what we felt like when we were 20 playing sports, like I, my joints didn't hurt. My back didn't hurt. I didn't have any problems like that. I yeah. felt fucking amazing. And I played sports every single day. And so so in my head, I'm healthy, and I'm the healthiest healthiest version of myself right now. So who the fuck are you, mind pump, to tell me that <laughs> you know that I, so I'm not healthy as an athlete? Like fuck off, I'm healthier than you are. You know what I'm saying? So that yeah. would be my attitude. So I understand where people are coming from when they become very defensive about you know being an athlete. How could it be an athlete not be healthy? Well, oh, and, and it's like losing abilities, losing skills, like that. That always. I mean, for the old athlete inside me, it's always one of those things that feels like, oh my God, I'm losing like healthy markers. Or even though I have to realize my body's changing, my chemistry's changing, like all these things, like I could preserve my body more and still acquire a lot of skill and different abilities, but it's going to look a little bit different, you know, than it did in my 20s. Well, it's also, I mean, also consider this. If we were to compare the average lifespan of athletes, I was just gonna say use your blues your blue zone analogy. Well, you always yeah, love to use yeah. because there's a perfect example in all the blue zones. Don't there's none, none of them, them are none athletes. Of, none of them are extreme. Yeah, none of them are if extreme I, athletes. No, if no. I if if you were but I'll, I'll, but I will say this. If we were to compare the uh, you know people who are really really hardcore into sports or working out and optimize their performance with nutrition, um, you know. Not super extreme, like they're not going crazy, but they're still, you know, competitive. They're going to live longer than the average person. So people are going to look at that and say, oh, well, I'm living longer than the average person. Therefore, I'm optimizing longevity. No, it's, you're comparing yourself to people who live shitty, right, right. who live absolutely terrible. Now, if you look at the world's blue zones, now these are places in the world where people, a disproportionate amount of people live to 100 years old or older. Disproportionate in the sense that, you know, two times more people in these areas uh, versus other areas of the world. And there's seven of them that they've identified. You know, one of them is Lo Loma Linda, California, the Seventh day Adventist. It's a religious group. Uh, they have very strict uh, nutritional guidelines. You have Sardinia, you have Okinawa, you have an, uh, an island off of Greece. And when they look at what these people do and why to try and figure out why they live so long, first and foremost, they identify that it's not genes. Although genetics play a role, they don't have special genes in these regions. Because once somebody moves from, for example, the island of Sardinia to, you know, Alabama, within one or two generations, they have the same lifespan as the people around them in Alabama. If once they follow the same lifestyle, so they've narrowed it down. Say, okay, it's not genes; it has to be lifestyle. Let's see what we find in common. And what they find is a lot of moderation. They find daily activity that isn't extreme. So nobody's running crazy. Nobody's doing hardcore lifting. Nobody. They're just active. Definitely more active than the average lazy ass, you know, Westerner. But they're nothing extreme. They don't eat extreme. Nobody's over like pushing calories. Nobody's pushing protein. Nobody's super restrictive. It's kind of moderate. Uh, they consume whole natural foods. They've got a, a really tight social network. They get a decent amount of sleep, but it's not extreme in any any direction. And that's longevity. Now, are any of these people going to be extreme? Are, are are any of these people at their best performance in a particular sport? No. If you want to push your body to that limit you are going to be taking away from longevity. But here's the way I look at it. Because then people, there's this whole argument like, well, you're not, you're not, you're not you know, focused on longevity, so forget you and this and that. Look, here's the deal. Like, it's not about living longer necessarily. It's about living better. Right. Yeah. And if you enjoy bench pressing 300 pounds and, and squatting 400 pounds, if you enjoy being able to run a marathon and under a particular time, if you enjoy eating you know, more protein because you like more muscle and all those different things, and that's giving you a better quality of life, then that's worth it, in my opinion. I do a lot of shit that takes away from my longevity. Right. A lot, right. you know? Sometimes I drink alcohol, sometimes I party, sometimes I, I don't sleep like I'm supposed to, but I'm enjoying my life. So, But yeah, the question is, is it possible to be hardcore athlete and be uh, you know truly healthy in the longevity sense there's well, a trade-off it doesn't say hardcore if it did say hardcore then we would all say definitely yeah. not you know what i'm saying because hardcore is different than just being an athlete yeah. being hardcore already in itself is, is is saying that you're out of balance and you're you're, you're overdoing something because right. you're hardcore about it but i, I mean I, th I think that's you said it perfect you can here. be a balanced athlete yeah that's well, possible well and, and i think that i think it's okay 
to do things that we love because, and you've said this before, Sal, that you're, it's not, our health isn't just uh, muscle, calories, it's not fat. just the physical. Right. There's a mental aspect to emotional, that. Emotional, all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of other, there's a lot of other parts that come into play that if you, if it provides, and that, and that to me was a lot of this whole motivation to get back into playing ball was, I I could totally sh- tell the shift change in my in my attitude in my like yep. we had a busy work day we had all this shit going on I got on the court I wasn't thinking about none of that yeah well none think of that about it. it makes you it makes you present that's right it, you're, and, you're there and you're experiencing it and you're not thinking about all this yes. other stuff and get letting that get in the way it, so it, it provides a great environment for you, that you know it's funny about this because this again we're, we were talking about that video that I did with Jason and. There was a guy on there that's like, well, I was a, pr- I played in the NFL and I ate, you know, I followed macros, but I, ate, you know, all these bad foods and stuff, and I'm healthy, this and that. And the irony of a pro, an ex pro football player saying that, you know, you know the lifespan, the average lifespan Dude. of a, yeah, 50, of a like 50, like 50, first 50, of all, first of all, go get your brain checked. Yeah, fifty three to fifty nine. Oh yeah, yeah, they 55. have a terrible lifespan. Yeah. Football is horrible. Dude, yeah, for your life, it's war. You're going to war every time you play. <laughs> yeah, right, and you got to feed yourself. Dude, like I went you're going through to war. all that. Yeah, you're not going to convince me <laughs> being in the NFL that like you've maintained optimal. But health. you know what? So, because we we market, we advertise that way, right? I mean, most of your athletes are the ones that are marketing the things that we're selling. To people, oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like well, think of it this way: when we, they're physical specimens. The, the know, pictures, the, that, the pictures that we advertise to people for health are super muscular, super shredded, shaved, tanned, and just amazing, uh, you know, cartoonish aesthetics. The reality is, optimal health looks a little softer. You're relatively lean. You're going to have decent definition, but you're not shredded. You're not going to be super crazy muscular. You're not going to be any of those things. You're just going to be like optimal health just looks healthy. And for most people, for most of you listening, if you reach that, you'll probably be very happy with the way you look. Right. Yep. Next question is from Have Namey. What is your take on stevia? Do you think it can be as harmful as other non-calorie oh, sweeteners? I knew you wanted to go here for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, I think that this is smart that we talk about this, man, because uh, one of the things, too, for sure, that we talk about on the show all the time is like uh, nothing. I will never attach myself to something and say, oh, this is better. This is the way. It's like right. we don't know. You know, as of right now, we believe that it's a better option. Like, yeah, because it's like plant derived. Right. At least we're going in that direction. I but... use it. I use it probably more than what I should without knowing more information. But do you think people are overusing it? Oh, for sure. So so here's the thing. So stevia is uh, it is a plant and it does contain um, stevia soids, I believe they're called. These are compounds in the stevia that give it its sweet flavor. It's a it's a relatively calorie free sweetener. So you know, manufacturers have been using stevia in replacement of things like aspartame and sucralose to sweeten supplements without adding carbohydrates or sugar because people like things to taste a particular way, which is funny in and of itself. But that's the case, right? We want health food, or we want to take a concentrated superfood supplement that's got you know seven different vegetables that are ground and powdered and dried and put into something but we don't want it to taste like vegetables we want it to taste like yeah you know sweet Ew. delicious something yeah. so we we sweeten it with something and we choose stevia and it's a natural counterpart um i definitely would i definitely think stevia is better than the artificial sweeteners for several reasons one um it's been used for a long time all over the world it doesn't seem to have the negative effect on the gut microbiome that things like sucralose and aspartame have. It's been longer, been around longer. I said that already. But does that mean it's going to have zero effects on the body? Of course not. Everything you consume, mm. especially if you consume a lot of them, will have effects in the body. Now, there, was, there were some old studies done to show that stevia had a contraceptive effect on female rodents. So there was some... Uh, fears that it may have mm. some effects on the hormones of mammals. Now, these were done on animals. Uh, animal studies uh, can only be replicated in humans about 30% of the time. So there's that. And there were, are, uh, there were other studies afterwards that couldn't replicate that same thing. Nonetheless, um, my take on stevia is that my take on anything uh, that you supplement in your to your body. Uh, it, it doesn't replace whole natural foods. Right. Um, but I would definitely recommend it over... The, and you'd, be, you'd probably be totally fine with it if the only way you consumed it is by chewing it up in the plant form. Yeah, and you know... some Because right, the amount that some you... Some stevia have, extra, extracts are, are super concentrated. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. I mean, it goes back to... And I, we've talked about this. It's been a long time since we brought up the, the analogy of the cane sugar. Like, if you were to actually 
eat cane sugar in its natural form in nature, like it would be like fucking eating it's a eight, huge stock yeah, like of fiber. Si- yeah, yeah, like one Coke is like six feet of fucking bamboo you'd have to chew up, which not happening, right? Yeah. The amount of calories you'd use to do that and burn, yeah. yada, 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 right? Well, so- I, I know the Japanese use, have used stevia for a very, very long time, and they've got great, uh, there's been great track record with it. No, you know, like I said, no major problems. There was a big study uh, done in 2008 where there were no adverse effects on the fertility of female mice. So they've tried to replicate that, um, but uh, they haven't found uh, you know any issues. But again, that doesn't mean there isn't necessarily any issues. Which yeah. I think right now we, I mean, I I use it all the time, and I try. And if I want to sweeten something without calories, I prefer stevia over any other. Right. So yeah. it's, I mean, to me, it's the lesser evil, or it's the one that we we feel most. Uh, you know, safe with in comparison to everything else that's out there right now. But that being said, it does not mean that it's it, it could be. We don't know. We don't know. But again, it's had, it does have a good track record. Here's the other thing too with sweet. Okay, besides calories, I think it was training your brain. Well, yeah. Besides calories and besides uh, you know the 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 actual molecule or chemical itself, the the perception of sweet changes things in the brain and it. I said it'd be like, you, like chewing bamboo, Doug. Yeah, like chewing. Yes, no, it's sugar like sugar cane. Yeah, not bamboo. No, no. I said chewing oh, yeah. up sugar cane would be like chewing six feet of bamboo. Yeah, Doug's trying to help you out there. Like, yeah, I know he was. I had to, <laughs> you got so. it right though. <laughs> but yeah, um, the sensation, the perception of sweet, even if we were to somehow magically attach electrodes to your brain to give you a perception of sweetness, so you have no chemicals in your mouth or in your stomach, you have no stevia, you have nothing that you've consumed but you're perceiving sweet, that will still cause changes to your body. And it can cause changes from how you perceive the taste of other foods to, you know. That's the, I'll tell you right now, and this is anecdotal, but I can always tell when my body gets used to taking in the artificial sweetener, it's a fucking trip to me. And I, and I fuck with this all the time. I have a protein bars in my refrigerator right now. I haven't, I haven't ate them in quite some time. But... You know when it when I haven't had any of them for a long time, and then I reintroduce them, they taste like shit. They really do. <laughs> yeah. And then I and then I'm like, what the fuck? I remember these things being great. Maybe these ones are old. That's always always I go through this whole like mind fuck with myself all the time. Like, oh, these must be old. I need a new box and get a new box. And then I realize, oh, that's not very good. By about the third one, it only takes about three in a row, like three days in a row of like consistently having a protein bar. Now all of a sudden, I fucking love them. Like Isn't literally, literally, and it, and I notice it every time I go away from them and come back. I can I can pinpoint the shift that when I first intake them, they don't taste good. I don't like them. Then all and to that to me right away is like flags. Yeah. We have to we have <laughs> yeah. to think we have to think to ourselves why do we perceive tastes in the first place? Like why is that even important? Like if you think about it, why don't we just eat food? Get what we need, yeah. and you know, get our nutrients, and we're done. Like it's just fuel. Yeah, it's just fuel. Why do we need to perceive taste? It's like a reward thing. Well, taste tells you a lot about what you're eating. Right. For example, vitamins in in nature, bitter many times means poison. Really, really strong bitter taste means poison. So if we taste something, we bite into it. Oh, we don't. That bitter taste drives us away. We, 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 we don't eat it, and we've avoided consuming too much poison. Sweet, sweet probably signified a very fast source of energy, mm-hmm. like fructose. Fructose is a sugar found in nature. So if I'm walking around in nature, think about it. You're, you're walking around, you're human. You know, uh, yeah, you've been walking you're, for days. You're tired. You're gonna uh, whatever. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a hunter-gatherer. We don't have stores around you. Where are you going to taste sweet? You're going to taste sweet if you randomly come upon fruit that's growing naturally, and you'll taste it and you'll be like, it'll blow you away. Like, hope, because you probably don't taste sweet all the time, right? So you'll taste it and be like, oh, my, what is this amazing flavor? First of all, t- sweet sweet tells you it's safe. In nature, sweet means it won't poison you. Number two, sweet means fructose, which is a very quick, you know, available source of energy, which is valuable. And it's going to make you eat the fuck out of this safe source of natural energy. Plus, it signifies particular types of nutrients like vitamin C which is found in things that tend to be sweet in nature. So these these sensations or perceptions exist for a reason. And if you trick your body by giving it something that gives you that perception, With but it's not a come to it. Yeah. yeah, your your brain starts to change. So well, so, then you don't. Then you do what happened to me, which was for a good portion of my young adulthood, I didn't like fruit. 
fruit tasted bland to me. Because you were comparing it to processed yeah, sugar. Because I'm yeah. comparing it to all the fucking sugar that I was getting in boxes and wrappers and things like that that is like it's accelerated by like a million times Isn't in compar- comparison. So fruit tastes blah to me. Take that out. I remember when I went and I was competing and I had like none of that shit in my diet. Then I go bite into an apple. Oh my God, bro. Mm-hmm. It tastes like I'm eating a candy bar because it was that sweet taste was so amazing, but it's crazy how much we can we can change that based off of our One of the our easiest profile. things you can do to reduce your food intake if you eat too much, if you're if you got a problem with overconsuming, this is really easy. Eat only super bland food. No joke. Yeah. No joke. This will you will naturally get palate fatigue. You will naturally eat less. Don't season your food. Don't combine foods. Eat them plain as fuck. You know, plain. You know, uh, you know, meat with well, nothing it's a, it's on it. It's a Chris Presser white yeah, potato thing. Yeah, right? and, and and watch what happens. You'll find that you'll, your your decision making changes quite a bit. I mean, seasoning food to some extent was a form of us processing food, right? Like, or or trying to increase its palatability and kind of hijack those things. So, anyway, my, my with this long rant, what I'm basically trying to say is, you know, like we our advice is with any supplement. Use them, but don't use them to replace. Right, use it judiciously. Uh, f- yeah, use them judiciously. Don't use them to replace whole natural foods. And if you have to sweeten something that, and you don't want sugar, uh, stevia is probably better than artificial sweeteners. Next is from Clubinator. Can your body get adapted to a certain number of steps every day and thus burn less calories? Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your body adapts to whatever it does, becomes more efficient at whatever it does a lot of. Um, you'll find if you take, I can't remember the study. I, I read, I read some, some, an article on this. I think it was where they took like a high level, um, cyclist and a high level runner, endurance athletes, and they were measuring and they got similar body weight and, you know, similar BMR and all that stuff. And they were measuring calorie burn during their respective sports and then they switched them. So now the cyclist is running and then the runner is cycling and their calorie burn went through the roof when they were doing the sport that they weren't used to. Yeah. I experienced this when I was training, uh, when I was doing a lot of jujitsu, and I was training like four days a week. And I had, at one point, I had really good endurance with jujitsu. Like I could go match after match after match and not and be okay and not you know die from you know being exhausted. And then we had a boxing coach come in and take us through boxing, and it exhausted the shit right. out of me. Right. I got so tired. And I remember thinking like I thought I was in shape. But it's just that specificity that my body adapted to being being so efficient at that particular movement that or you know pattern of movements yeah, or whatever that pattern brought. recognition absolutely yeah. so yeah you could totally adapt but that doesn't mean you're gonna lose the health benefits from it right right, you right. Know? there's a lot of other health benefits that go with just you being up and moving I think it's important to note though because it's like uh, you know this is why I've had construction workers or people that have jobs where they're on their feet and they move all day long and they're obese and they're obese yeah. and it's like well your body's gotten so you've been doing that for 10 years 15 mm, years group 20. instructors right you're yeah right, right? your body's gotten so like, adapted to all this that you're not really seeing the major calorie burn benefits but you still do get the the blood flow movement you get your your actual movement for your your body and your joints from not sitting sedentary like you get all those benefits from that but this is also why I, when I teach people to focus on their knee and their steps, yeah, that you incrementally, yeah, and you incrementally bring it up, right? Like I don't want to take somebody who is uh, less than four thousand steps a day and say, okay, the goal, which is, I think a generic goal that you always hear is ten thousand steps. Like, oh, let's get you to ten thousand steps right away. Like, well, actually, you don't even need to get there. I mean, if you're averaging less than four thousand, like taking you up to six thousand is already going to create a fifty percent increase, right? right? Yeah. It's already going to it's going to show you a change in difference, and then you just slowly you know bring that up. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, as far as health is concerned. It's good for you to move every single day. Um, yeah. So forget, and here, you know, the reason why I'm addressing it this way is because I think people ask these questions not necessarily because they enjoy the walking or because it's good for them, but more so because they're thinking in terms of fat loss. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, f- do it because you enjoy it. Like, go for your walk and enjoy your walk. And, and it's good for your health. It's good for your mental health. It's good for your physical health. And forget about the fat burn uh, effects of it because those are so short lived. You're going to get some fat burning from if you start walking right now and you don't normally walk. Yes, you're going to burn some body fat. Very short lived. It's not going to last very long. Um, and it's a terrible approach to a, a, long, a terrible long term approach to fat loss. What would be a more effective long term fat loss approach is, of course, nutrition. Look at your diet. That's number one. And number two, look at getting your metabolism to burn more calories by prioritizing building muscle. Resistance training that does res- resistance training does that very effectively. 
uh, you know, regular daily walking or cardio activity, after a short period of time, it, it, it yeah, stops working. I, I think it's more important to look at the correlation of your eating habits with your steps. Like, so what I have found in my experience with people that I have that track and then report back to me, um, what's most common is we typically make the worst choices when we're not up and moving and, and we're sedentary. So when you're sitting in a movie theater, when it's late night after a long day of work and you plop down on the couch, it's also when all of a sudden those cravings or whatever you think is going on start happening and you start making bad food choices. Yeah. Like So the, the getting up and the moving piece is important and it has its own benefits, but the correlation between your movement and how you're consuming and what you're consuming to me is even more important is to pay attention to that and your pattern and I, for me, a, a game change. We talk about par- paradigm shattering moments in our in our lives. You know, for me, uh, when we first came, when the very first tracker came out, Body Bug, way back when, and I realized that holy shit, Monday through Saturday, I was burning five thousand plus calories a day, and then Sunday I was burning twenty five hundred because I sat around and watched football all day. Mm-hmm. And guess what? It, that in my mind, I justified that was my day off. It's also the day that I had pizza or beer or, or fucking go off the off the you know, the radar with, with all kinds of uh, bad choices. Storm. Right. And, and it was an, that was enough to keep me from progressing my physique to the next level. So I think uh, understanding that correlation uh, is more important than even just focusing just on the steps by itself. Excellent. Check it out. Go to YouTube. Check out our channel, Mind Pump TV. Go look and see what all the hubbub is all about. It's a new word. I'm going to use that. Hubba. And it's on YouTube. Subscribe. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>